Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Continuing our freshman spotlights as we take a look at one of the more intriguing freshmen from this 2023 class that will be making an immediate impact in this 2023 college football season, and that is Malachi Coleman. Now, for Nebraska fans, we're running through a lot of these true freshmen that will be making an impact, and Malachi Coleman is not the only one on Nebraska that we'll be covering. A guy like Cam Lenhart, a guy like Prince Will, those guys will be covering as well. So again, before we get into it, just want to say thank you to you guys and all the support. It's no secret. The boys love talking recruiting. And now we get a chance to talk about some of these guys we talked about during the recruiting process. What impact are they going to have year one on their respective college football teams? And the Nebraska fans, you guys have shown a ton of love. Nebraska been hot on the trail in 2024. We got a few more coming, I think. So if you do enjoy the content, especially Nebraska fans, appreciate you guys rocking with the boys. Subscribe to the channel. We appreciate all the support you guys have shown. And let's get into Malachi Coleman. And first, let's just talk about the traits that he's going to bring to this Nebraska team. Now, he did not enroll for that spring camp season. So that might hurt his chances at getting out of the field early. But at the end of the day, He's a guy, especially with what he brings to the offensive side of the football, that's going to be hard to not let him find the field at least a little bit because he's 6'4". He runs a 10 4 600 meter dash time. That size, that speed, that ability to stretch the defense vertically, it's going to be something that Nebraska is going to want to get on the field. And again, maybe even special teams. He was phenomenal at special teams as well. Whatever way, I feel like Nebraska is going to want a chance to get this guy touching the football. And I want to take a look at the depth chart and just talk about where he might fit in. And again, this is a team that's going to run a lot of 12 personnel, so there's not as much room and playing time for the wide receivers. But I think Malachi Coleman brings something that you really don't have in this Nebraska offense, especially with Trey Palmer leaving. And at times, like the only successful thing in this passing game for Nebraska was working Trey Palmer vertically down the field and hitting some of those explosive plays. You lose Trey Palmer, and I know some of you guys were kind of shouting out Xavier Batu. I, I am a fan of, and he's he's back with the program. I like that. I just think Malachi Coleman's a little bit different. And even if Malachi Coleman's not necessarily putting up the numbers on the stat sheet, I still think he provides a lot of value to this offense because you know Nebraska's going to want to go play action and they're going to want to work the middle, short, intermediate, middle of the field kind of in, in the passing attack, right? Use that play action, get the linebacker sucked in, and guys like Billy Kent, the tight ends like Thomas Fedone and Eric Gilbert, who hopefully gets a waiver. And that I'm only going to go 30 seconds on the NCAA, but that's absolutely wild that we don't even know if Eric Gilbert is going to be able to play in this 2023 season. Like, at least let the kid know. Like, if hey, you're not, you're not eligible this season, so he knows that. Wild that the NCAA is kind of dragging this. I was trying, I'm trying to find information on it, and the NCAA is just quiet about it. So, end of my rant there. But getting back to where I'm going with how Malachi Coleman fits into this offense, if you have a guy who is as fast as Malachi Coleman, a 4 3 type guy on the 40 yard dash, like this dude absolutely burns, you're going to have to respect what he brings to the field, especially vertically. And what does that do when you have somebody that you have to respect so much with that size and speed? It's going to let that middle of the field open up a little bit. And guys like Thomas Fedone, Billy Kemp, you guys know how high I am on Billy Kemp, especially working that short intermediate route tree. I think it's going to open it wide open for some of those guys. So even if Malachi Coleman is not lighting up the stat sheet, he's going to provide some big time, big time opportunity for some of the other guys in this Nebraska offense. Again, Xavier Betts might be able to provide some of that too, but I think Malachi Coleman is, is just a little bit different. Now, I want to take you guys to the film of Malachi Coleman, who during his senior year was, was really banged up, but you still see a little bit of what Malachi Coleman is going to bring. And just look at the alignment. I know this is at the high school level, but they, I mean, they're pressing him at the line of scrimmage, and they have a safety sitting right over the top of him. And, and why is that? Now, you're not going to see that kind of treatment for a true freshman at the college football level, but you're going to see elements of it. Like Malachi Coleman's a guy, even as a true freshman, defenses are going to need to know where he is on the football field because he is 6'4". He runs a 10 4 600 meter dash time, legit 4 3 40 time. Like you have to respect that size and that speed, and you have to have a safety that's back there 
keeping his eyes on a guy like Malachi Coleman. And so you fire up the film, like he's got really nice release and he plays that de- like that outside linebacker defense end. So he knows how to use his hands to get some separation. And then the ball skills, like even when he is double covered, he has a safety over top of him. He has that six, four frame that he's just going to go up and make plays. And that's, what's so special about Malachi Coleman is how comfortable he is. He's not just, and you see this a lot as we pause it real quick. You see a lot of wide receivers just have that verified track time. Malachi Coleman's a guy that feels very comfortable going up and addressing the football as well, which I think is something overlooked. And here you go again. Like they got the rest coverage with the safety. That's the, that's the Kelvin Johnson treatment, right? Like the, the straight up double team. We're going to take two guys and their responsibility is just to cover Malachi Coleman. And quite frankly, they couldn't do it, right? You see Malachi Coleman again, just get, he's very good releasing off the line of scrimmage because he's so big and physical. And then he gets to work after the catch as well gets in the end zone. I, we're not going to watch his, his defensive end outside linebacker play, but that's actually cr- like he could be – you you could put him at that ad, ad rusher, put some weight on him, and I think he'd be an All-American ad rusher as well. He's just such a special caliber athlete. Now going back to the depth chart and just kind of finishing out this discussion on how does Malachi Coleman fit in year one, and I will say I think he's a little bit more of a raw prospect – because he played so much on the defensive side of the ball. I wouldn't say he's the most polished wide receiver there is. That being said, you don't really need the polish right now to bring what Malachi Coleman can bring to this offense, which is stretch the field vertically and be, quite frankly, just a matchup nightmare. And for guys like Marcus Washington, who's maybe a little bit of a a work the middle of the field, work the boundary, Xavier Betts, Billy Kemp, the fourth, I think Malachi Coleman even if he doesn't put up the numbers, is going to open up this offense in a meaningful way, especially when you account for the departure of a guy like Trey Palmer. And so Malachi Coleman, when we go through this list of true freshmen that can kind of provide some juicier one, he's certainly on the list because quite frankly, and I don't, I don't know if Nebraska fans will argue with me that much on this. I don't think this wide receiver room is elite, right? I love Billy Kemp. I think Marcus Washington, I'm hoping he can put it together. He's a guy I was banging the table for 12 months ago. But outside of that, like there's not a ton of proven production. You look back to last year, that, that passing attack, if it wasn't going through a tight end, it was really going to Trey Palmer. Malachi Coleman brings just some added juice to this pass catcher room that I think will open this offense up a little bit more. When you can't bring a safety in the box because you have to respect Malachi Coleman and his ability to work vertically, That's what I think happens. And if you do bring that safety into the box to try to stop that run game, which I think can be pretty good for Nebraska, that's when Malachi Coleman maybe can eat up a little bit and and get vertical and make some explosive plays. Malachi Coleman, at the end of the day, is a special, special prospect that also, just a colleague, fits this Nebraska program perfectly, right? Hometown kid that also you see what he does off the field, like a really, really good guy. And what I was reading before I hopped on and talked to Malachi Coleman is work ethic's unbelievable. Like as a true freshman, he's coming in, just handling his business. If you're a Nebraska fan, you have to be extremely excited about what Malachi Coleman's going to bring now. And then in the future, right? You talk about Daniel Kalen coming in, Isaiah McMorris, Davon Hall, like this wide receiver room is going to have a ton of juice for what I think is a really talented quarterback and Daniel Kalen coming in the future. So the present, I'm excited for, but even more importantly, the future for Malachi Coleman certainly deserves a list on the freshman spotlight series. Appreciate the Nebraska fans checking the boys out again. If you do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. I think we're going to have some more Nebraska news coming up on the recruiting trail. So I'll break those down for you guys as well. Appreciate you guys. and We'll talk to y'all later.